Hey everyone, April Dunham here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to create a flow in Microsoft Flow that will allow you to do a round robin assignment. If you're not familiar with the term round robin, all it is, put simply, is a way to loop through a list and do an auto assignment. This comes into play a lot if you're using some kind of CRM system like Salesforce, for example, or Dynamics, um, where you want to assign leads or case records to users. So if you get a lead in on your website for someone wanting some help, and you want to be able to loop through your sales team members and evenly and automatically assign this task to follow up on the different leads. I'm going to walk through how to make this happen in Flow, but first, here's the intro. To demonstrate this round robin functionality, I'm going to use SharePoint to store the necessary list to handle this, just because it's the easiest to get started. The first thing that you're going to need to do is to create two SharePoint lists. The first list will be a list that will contain all the different members in your team that you'd like to assign these tasks to. You can keep it simple. All you really need is the person's name, so you can reuse the title field like I did here and then a column to store their email so that we can send them an email with their assignment. So I populated that information here with my sales team, so we're good to go there. And these are both just single line of text fields. The next list you're going to need is a list called counter, and you're only going to have one item in this list. You're gonna use the title field, and then you'll have another field, which is a number field called value. And you'll want to add in one item here. You can just leave the title, call it counter, and then set the value initially to zero. This counter is going to be used in our flow to loop through and handle and determine where we are in the loop of the round robin. So that's it. That's all the list that you need to get started. Now all the work is done in flow. So let's jump over to flow. And here I've already created the flow. Now how this flow is triggered can depend on your process. For this particular example, our website gets leads emailed to my mailbox. And I have it set up on our contact form on the website that all emails that get sent are appended with this TF website request text. And this process could be different depending on what you're trying to do. But all you need here is a way to get in a request, monitor for that request, so that you can do the assignment. So I have the when a new email arrives trigger and I'm searching based on subject so that when a new email comes with this subject then this will be fired. Now I need to insert a SharePoint get items action which is what I have here and I'm going to point that to that team members list that I created in SharePoint which holds my sales staff. Then we need to insert a SharePoint get item singular action and point that to our counter list. Now, as I said earlier, this list will only ever have one item in it, and it's used for the counter. So we can point it manually to the item with the ID of one and get that information. Next, we need to initialize a few variables that we'll use in this flow. The first one we need is an array type variable where we'll put in the team members that we get from this get team members action. So we're just initializing that at this point. The next, we want to initialize a counter. So the key to getting this round robin stuff working is to have a counter that is going through, starting at zero and appending one each time an email comes in and you need to assign it. So you can initialize an integer variable. In this case, I called it current counter. And you just need this simple expression where we convert the value property from our counter list that we got up here to an integer so that we can do some math on that. And that's just done with the int expression. So type in int and then pass in the value that you're wanting to transform into an integer. And the final variable that we want to initialize is the next counter. So we're gonna need two different counters going on here. One for what the counter currently is at, and then another for what the next counter value will be. So we're just gonna initialize another integer formula here. Now that all of that is out of the way, it's time to loop through all of our team members appended into our team member array. So we'll do that with the apply to each 
and you'll just set the output to the value of our get team members action. And within this apply to each, we want to go back and append to that team members array we just initialized. And we'll append the ID of that team members item in that SharePoint list. So you can kind of see where we're going with this. We're taking advantage of the fact that SharePoint automatically assigns a unique ID to every item in a list. And we're going to use that in against our counter to do this loop through auto assignment. Now that we have all of our team members IDs in an array, now that we have all of our team members IDs in an array, we want to insert a condition. And in that condition, we'll want to compare the current counter variable where we set whatever the ID value was in that counters list. And we want to see if that value is greater than or equal to the length of our team members variable. What this is doing is that array, we can get the length, meaning how many items are in there. So if we go back to that SharePoint list here, see we had four team members in there. So the length of that array should be four. We need this check because we only want to count and loop through the total number of team members we have in the list. So if our current counter is equal to four, that means I need to reset my counter because I only have four team members. So I need to restart from the beginning and start my assignment back at the first person in that list. Now based on that check, so if it is greater than or equal to the length of my team members variable, then I want to set that next counter variable back to one. Because like I just said, we need to reset that counter. If it's not, that means I can keep continuing on with my counter. So I want to set my next counter variable to the current counter. Now in each of these, we'll just insert an update item action and we're going to update our counter. So if my current counter is not equal to the length of the team members variable, then I want to set the value in my counter to the current counter plus one. And we can do that with this expression here, the add expression. Just type in add and then pass in the value that you want to append to. So in this case, it's the value of my get counter action. And then just do a comma and put in the number that you want to add to. So in this case, just one. So I want to add one to my current counter. That way we know that the next person that I want to assign this to would be the team member with the ID containing whatever's next in line, one, two, three, or four. All right, so hopefully this is making sense so far. So we'll collapse all this condition stuff. So that's set our counter. Now that that counter is automatically incrementing, we need to go fetch the team member whose list ID contains whatever our counter is set to. So we do that with a get item action again, point it to that team members list, and just set the ID to the next counter variable. That next counter variable was just set up above here. So whatever that is, we want to get the corresponding team member. So that's really all there is to it as far as getting the auto assignment, the loop through round robin stuff going. What you do after this point is really completely up to you and whatever your process is. In my case, I want to do two things. I want to assign a task and planner to that salesperson and I want to forward them on the email that was received so they can see any additional details. But this could be anything that you want it to. Maybe it needs to you know, write back to a SharePoint list and assign the person, whatever you want. But in this case, uh, let's start with the planner piece, what I did here. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is insert a create task action and point that to the group in the plan that you want to create this task in. Uh, for the title, I'm just going to use the subject of the email. And then for the assign to, I'll use the email from our get member info action. And I'm just doing a simple expression here on the due date, um, making it to where it's due one day from the current date. Now you might notice in this create task, I don't have an option to put in a description. I can only define the start end times and the title. So if I want to do that extra step of putting in a description for this task, I have to actually add a new action called the update task details action, point it to the task that I just created with the ID here. And now I have the ability to put in a description for that task. So in this case, I was putting in the body of the email. A uh, word of caution with that, it will bring over all the HTML in the email. So you probably want to put 
something else in here besides the actual body of the email. That will create a task for that selected user and planner. And then finally, I want to also forward the email. So there's just a forward an email action. Make sure that you use the V2, the most recent action for this. And just pass in the message ID, which you can get from your trigger and the email which you'll get from your get team member info. And that's all there is to it. I will put a link to this flow and export on GitHub so that you can download this and just import it into your environment. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.